Hello guys, this is Arvind here from Edureka and I welcome you all to this amazing session on AWS EMR. So before we move any further, let us have a quick look at the agenda for today's session. So as you can see here, we'll be starting with what exactly is AWS EMR, the actual definition of EMR, and then we will discuss the various advantages of EMR. Moving on, we will discuss the various applications or the usages, or you can say the scenarios where EMR can be used. And then we will have a look at the comparison between AWS EMR and AWS Redshift. And finally, we will have a look at the demo wherein we'll create a Hadoop cluster using AWS EMR. So I hope I'm clear with the agenda. So without any further ado, let us begin with our first topic. What is AWS EMR? So Amazon EMR, that is Elastic MapReduce, is the service offering that lets you scale and run data lake services on demand in the Amazon cloud. EMR is designed to be an alternative to on-premise big data server provisioning and processing using open source products such as Hadoop, Hive, Spark, Flink, Presto, TensorFlow, working with S3 for storage and EC2 instances for computing power. So EMR is a fully managed data lake service that can decouple data storage from compute resources and instead it can make compute clusters scalable available to be utilized on demand. It includes the ability for multiple clusters to access the same data sets at once. So this was the definition of AWS EMR. And now let us talk about the benefits or the advantages of AWS EMR. So as you can see here, the first advantage that EMR has to offer us is the reduce the cost of physical infrastructure. As with all cloud-based compute services, EMR removes the need to purchase, maintain, run, and house physical server infrastructure that would be performing big data computational services on site. You can use the same tools and services that you currently use on site in the cloud instead, but instead pay per second for the compute cluster resources that you use. So the second point here is it saves system admin time. One of the most important advantages of using EMR is savings in the system administrator's time that would otherwise be spent configuring and provisioning on-site servers for big data computational tasks. It is possible that you may have self-built scripts to aid in this process. For every change that's made or new service that's added, these will need to be tweaked. With EMR handling all these operational details for you, it means you spend less time configuring manual admin tasks. The next point here is the optimum resource utilization. The key to EMR's cost saving benefits really lies in the fact that storage and compute can be decoupled. This means that you can spin up and scale EC2 instances and clusters when needed. Then release resources once you're done. Inbuilt elasticity with AWS auto scaling implies that you only pay for what you need. Here you must keep in mind that to get the same performance as in house processing, your storage will need to be kept locally. And apart from this, if you talk about the other benefits, so EMR includes 24 seven customer support as standard with a subscription, which is far less than other Spark and Hadoop vendors charge, fast spin up times for instances to run your service, and an EMR that can be run on AWS virtual private cloud for increased corporate data security. The benefits of EMR extend far beyond simply time and cost savings. EMR is useful to deliver real business value by processing big data. So these were the benefits or you can say the advantages of AWS EMR. And now let us talk about the AWS EMR applications. So the first application here is change the rigid in-house cluster infrastructure. Running the same complete cluster infrastructure anytime you need to analyze big data. No matter what the terms of analysis are is a waste of resources. Unless you have managed to configure elastic clustering on your machines, EMR is more resource efficient. The second point here is the hassle-free Hadoop management. Currently, businesses rely on on-premise Hadoop for their big data processing needs. With Hadoop fully managed on EMR, this implies that you remove the time and complexity involved with in-house Hadoop management such as upgrading, maintenance, node failures, operational costs, and so on. And the last point here is, the less time for data processing. If running processing in-house is too time consuming, leaving people waiting around for results or other teams waiting to add to the queue, then you have the option to either add new physical hardware to speed up the process 
or you can choose a completely scalable EMR solution to complete tasks in a fraction of the time. Switching to EMR reduces the time on average to run the queries by 40% and increasing the number of queries run each day by 33%. So these were some of the applications or the scenarios or you can even say the usages of AWS EMR. So one of the most common query is like when to use AWS EMR and when to use AWS Redshift. So if you talk about Redshift, that is AWS Redshift. So you must use Redshift when you have a traditional data warehouse. Second point here is when you need the data to be relatively hot for analytics such as the business intelligence. Third, when there is no data engineering team. Fourth point here is when you require joins on your data. And the last point here is when you need a cluster which is to be available 24 7. So these were the circumstances when you should use AWS Redshift. Now, if you talk about the AWS EMR, you should use AWS EMR when you don't need a cluster 24 7. The second point here is when elasticity is more important. Like one of the top priorities of your application is the elasticity. So the third point here is when the cost is important. The next point here is you must use AWS EMR when you have until a few hundred terabytes of data or even you can see petabytes of data. And finally you should use AWS EMR when you want to separate compute and storage. So these were the scenarios where you should use AWS EMR. So let's just consider a use case here. So there's this company called Yelp which was founded in the year 2004 with the main goal of helping people connect with great local businesses. The Yelp community is best known for sharing in-depth reviews and insights on local businesses of every sort. In their 10 years of operations, Yelp went from one city wonder, that is San Francisco, to an international phenomenon spanning across 29 countries with more than 120 markets. Yelp had an average 138 million monthly unique visitors and more than 61 million local reviews that have been written by Yelpers. Or the people who use Yelp. So what was the challenge in front of this company called Yelp? So Yelp has established a loyal consumer following due in large part to the fact that they are vigilant in protecting the user from shill or suspect content. Yelp uses an automated review filter to identify suspicious content and minimize exposure to the consumer. The site also features a wide range of other features that help people discover new businesses such as lists, special offers and events and communicate with each other. Additionally, business owners and managers are able to set up free accounts to post special offers, upload photos and message customers. The company has also been focused on developing mobile apps and was recently voted in the iTunes apps Hall of Fame. Yelp apps are also available for Android, Blackberry, Windows 7 and so on. So local search advertising makes up the majority of Yelp's revenue stream. The search ads are colored light orange and clearly labeled sponsored results. Paying advertisers are not allowed to change or reorder their reviews. So how did Yelp made use of AWS that is Amazon Web Services? So Yelp originally had to depend upon giant raids to store their logs along with their single local instance of Hadoop. When Yelp made the move to Amazon Elastic MapReduce, they replaced the rates with the Amazon S3 that is simple storage service and immediately transferred all Hadoop jobs to Amazon Elastic MapReduce. Yelp uses Amazon S3 to store daily logs and photos generating around 1.2 TB of logs per day. The company also uses Amazon EMR to power approximately 20 separate batch scripts most of those processing the logs. So if you talk about the features of AWS EMR. Their jobs are exclusively written in Python while Yelp uses their own open source library called MR job to run the Hadoop streaming jobs on Amazon EMR with Boto to talk to Amazon S3. Yelp also uses S3 CMD and the Ruby Elastic MapReduce utility for monitoring. So Yelp developers advise others working with AWS to use the Boto API as well as MR job to ensure full utilization of Amazon Elastic MapReduce job flows. Yelp runs approximately 250 Amazon Elastic MapReduce jobs per day and all this can be done with the help of AWS with other Hadoop application development. So how did Yelp gain out of this application? So using Amazon Elastic MapReduce, Yelp was able to save 55,000 US dollars 
in upfront hardware costs and get up and running in a matter of days and not months. However, most important to Yelp is the main opportunity cost. So these were the benefits that Yelp gained by making use of AWS EMR. So now let's just move on to the next part here and which is the final part of this session that is the demo part. So here we are going to create an EMR cluster in AWS. So let me just quickly show you how are we going to do this for that you just need to log into your AWS console here. So this is the management console. Once you log in using your credentials, you'll be navigated to this page AWS management console. So once you go here, here you have to click on EMR. So EMR can be found in the analytics section here. Okay, as you can see here, just click on that. And this is where it will be navigated. Since we have to create a cluster here, so let's just click on the cluster here. Once you do this, you have to name your cluster. So you can name it whatever you want as per your convenience. I'm naming it Arvind cluster and launch mode is by default cluster. The release is the latest one EMR. And depending upon your application, you can select this any one out of this four. If you have core Hadoop application, select this option. Whereas if you want to run a Spark application, you can select this option. Okay. So as of now, we are selecting this only. And the hardware configuration by default, it's three, one master, two core nodes. So after this, you have to select one EC2 key pair. If you don't know how to create an EC2 key pair, you can click on the link here and create it. So now I'm clicking on this create cluster here. So as you can see here, it shows starting. The message is being displayed here starting. So this might take a few minutes. Okay, so as you can see here, it is still starting. So we just need to refresh this. And this might take a few minutes here. Since our cluster is starting now, and the cluster will be ready once it goes into the waiting state. So before that, we have to create a few things here. So as you can see here, security groups for master, you have to click on this link here and you'll be navigated to this page here. So once you do that, you have to click on the security group of master here. Okay. After that, you have to click on this inbound tab here. Okay. So once you do this and click on edit. So what you have to do is you have to click on add rule here and for that you have to select one option called SSH and here it says anywhere you have to select this option anywhere and you have to just save this. So the same thing can be done for slave as well, but it is totally optional. So once we're done with this, let me just close this. So let me just refresh the EMR console here. And there's this option here to connect to the master node using SSH. So these are the steps that you must follow. This is the procedure to connect to the master node and you can then write your steps or jobs. You can write your jobs using the command line. So the steps are very simple here for that. You have to download an application called Putty. So I've already downloaded that. I have to click on this. So once you do this, you have to click on session here on this session have to enter the host field name. Just copy this and paste it here. And once you do this, you have to click on connection here. You have to enable this option here. Enable TCP keep lives. Just click on here and after that click on SSH here. And once you do this, click on authentication here and you have to select a private key here. That is party private key. So I already have this key here. Edureka key pair. Select this and click on open. So you'll get this alert here, party security alert, whatever this is written here. You have to just click on yes here. So as you can see here, this is the command line from where you can write your jobs. So this is how you connect to the master node. As you can see here, previously it was starting and now it is running. So which means the cluster is ready. As you can see here, Arvind cluster, it's running and the green symbol here. So after this, how do you write jobs for this cluster? So for that you have to click on steps here. So what you can do is you have to click on add step here. So depending upon the type of application, say for example, if you have to write a pig program, hive program, streaming program or any custom jar. So say for example, you have a Hadoop program on Eclipse. You can export it using a jar and you can select that jar here. 
so custom jar whatever the name of the jar and the location where you have this jar so you can keep that jar file on the amazon s3 which is basically used for storage purpose so similarly if you have a hype program like hype queries so you can select even that as well so for hive there's a script called hive script and which can be stored on s3 as you can see here you can store it on s3 and script input and output so basically here what you do is when you go to s3 you have to create three separate folders so one folder will have a script you have to just copy the location of that over here and the input data and the output these are the various things that you can perform using a cluster in aws emr so let me just click on cluster here okay so as of now you can see it is in the running state once it is running you write whatever steps or the jobs that you want you perform your operations or tasks and after that once you're done with this you have to terminate this so it's very important to terminate the emr cluster here else it will fetch you unnecessary charges like cluster is running and you're not doing anything on it it is simply running so this will cost you unnecessarily a few dollars maybe so whenever you're done with using a cluster you must terminate it for that you have to select this cluster here and click on terminate so it says are you sure i'm sure so once you're done using your cluster you can just terminate it here okay so here it says terminating user request so guys this was a small demo wherein i showed you how to create an emr cluster in aws emr so that's all from me in this session i hope you have enjoyed this session and you have understood whatever that i've explained here till then happy learning thank you so much